See, now, if you look at it, now, now, I'm listening to you guys talk about the production of your album, and we've talked about the keyboards, and we've talked about, you've brought other elements in, and they've all, baseball metaphor, hit it out of the park. <laughs> and uh, yeah. that goes to tell you, <laughs> it tells season. me, Wait, another sorry. Almost. Okay, so he scored a goal. What are you doing? He had a shutout. Okay, so uh, I, uh, that goes to tell me when you're doing a record and, and or doing a project and everything is really coming together like that, it kind of gives you a special feeling. I mean, I felt that a few times in my career. To be honest with you, I felt it. With Exodus, I felt it with Fabulous Disaster, I felt it with Tempo of the Damned, and I also felt it with Persona Non Grata. So uh, there was a feeling when you were doing the record like, whoa, we're doing something here that's like, you know, that I really feel, and I'm not trying to be a homer because it's my shit. I just feel that it is. And then when they come out, that people's reactions are the same way. And I did you guys get that yeah, feeling also doing where we, this? where we recorded it in Atomic Garden in Oakland. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it, right. It's just... It, it makes you want to. It makes you want to do a great job. It's right. just. A, it's a great vibe, and there, the, the vibe is everything. Amazing, and it just. It was fun. And it, Dugan too. And Chris Dugan. Know. Chris Dugan brought it to the next level. You know, so. he's such a great guy, and and he understood immediately what we were going for, what we wanted to do, and how we worked, and and he was super supportive of everything, and really helped sort of like push it. You know, and. There was never a, oh no, we can't do that. Never, like, let's do this, let's try that. Right, let's sure. Do, you know, it was sure. always, let's That's try great. everything. Yeah, and the studio is just really good to, you know, have someone tell you when it's, when, you know, when you're done. You know, like, yeah, you, you killed it, it's great. Let's move on, you right? Because you can keep cycling. Oh forever. yeah, you can beat yourself up to death. Yeah, but you I have to trust that, that person because I've right. worked with some engineers who are just like, yeah, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's but, uh, too not bad. Not doing. It's got to be collective. Right. It really does. You got you got to trust that yeah. person, but they also have to trust you because you got you know what's right here yeah. and what you're trying for a vocalist anyway. What I'm trying to do, uh, and and uh, that worked out. You know, that's how that works. If you can get somebody in there that's doing. Um, that's uh, basically the fourth member of the band, kind of, when you're in that, in that <coughs> environment. That's what it was like. And Absolutely. that's what it has to be. Yeah. And again, I'm listening to this, um, listening to the album. So to, to finish off side A, and I love side A and side B. I grew up with two sides, you know? Yeah. On a CD, they just run, but side A yeah. and side AB is a song we were talking about that had the keyboards in it, uh, Dig Your Own Grave. And we spoke about, um, about you know, you consciously going at that from a rainbow standpoint right Drew and that's that's kind of you know we were b before before we were on before we started we were talking of you know you were mentioning you know touchstones for this record and you nailed it you know with rainbow rising there was a you know we definitely that was a there was a touchstone with that and we were listening to dig your own you know, we were listening back to dig your own grave and it didn't when we wrote it there were keyboards were not a thought we were listening back to it, and but Rainbow Rising was always in the background, Man. right? And Matt goes, you know, we could fucking put keyboards on that song as we're listening to it. We could, like, we could fucking, that song could have fucking keyboards on it. Just like, you know what I mean? Just like Rising. And Jason was like, I know the person to do it. That's how it came about. And we sent her the song, and bam. And when we listened to it, like, at the end of the first time listening to it, we were all just, there was like silence for like five or six seconds. And we were just like, yeah, <laughs> we were just like, how did that happen? Just the whole sound too. Like <laughs> that was I, incredible. I just you know, yeah. You know, Jason wrote the lyrics for that one, and it's pretty fucking dark. Um, <laughs> it stays apart. I'll say this. Yeah, I helped arrange it. He sent me these things. I'm like, Jesus, where's, man. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like, come on, man. I put it together. It's gonna capture I had to sing it, right but right no, I, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> no, it was good. No, it was. You, know, you were talking earlier about all these dark bands you've been in, and well, so that show, yeah, it, it was. Did bring it. They're great lyrics, though. I love that. That that's almost like a poem. I, I, that's like some Game of Thrones shit. Again, the, 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 <laughs> of all the of all the songs on the record, and and I think that that one, I mean, again, from what you're doing and what you've done in the past, that one really stands kind of apart. I mean, I, I guess because of the keyboard part, but I mean. Uh, like rising, I can. I mean, whatever you were conveying, you hit me because I caught it, man. I caught again. 
No, no, I had my mid out and it came to first base and the guy was out at first base. If you only knew the inside joke that was going on beforehand, believe me, there's a fucking mutiny going on in this room. No one be there to catch it because they've all <laughs> gone to Toronto. Yeah, well, so who, I, I don't even know who you're. <laughs> I, here we go back. And, I don't even know who my third baseman and my first baseman are right now. Season starts when? Two weeks? Absolutely, yes. Now, on the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellas' names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellas' name on first base. Who? The fella playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who is on first? Have you got a first baseman on first? Certainly. Side? Then who's playing first? Absolutely. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. And why not? The man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Why shouldn't he? Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Who's white? Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Okay. Back to music. Sorry. Back to music. Okay. Side B. Talk okay. About. Will to survive. This song was literally, and I'm not bragging. It was really written in five minutes, and it was me and Jason fucking around one morning. Drew was a little late, and <laughs> and I started doing some hard, like it's almost like old East Bay hardcore mm -hmm. thing. And all of a sudden, he exploded with this beat. And I didn't even know he could do that shit. It was like Brad, and so we. Put it together, put the like mosh part in the middle. Jason wrote some lyrics and Drew came in and did the solo and that's it. Yeah, it was written. I think we had it. We, 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 we pretty much finished it with the lyrics in 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a great song. I and then love we didn't that. change, we were smart enough not to change it. So. Yeah, over listened to it. Really great. Really, really powerful. Profound. Forsaken Soul. Yeah, it was another jam. Another jam with uh, right? Yeah, I just I just came up with a with a riff that's kind of different than what a lot of other <coughs> stuff is. Up with the riff first, sometimes Matt or you, Drew or Jason. Even you know you're, you you know what's up. You you can no, say it's, hey, all, it's, all, it's all three of us. All three of us. Yeah, someone will come up with the pens, the riff, and someone will come up with a chorus. You know, just a couple words, and we'll put it. it it's it's a real collective. It really is. Nice. And nice. We, we, we try to record. You know, all of our practices, and then go that part worked, that part didn't, and then uh -huh. we can kind of like you know collage some. Sometimes sometimes they're whole pieces. You know, it just depends on what, how we're working that week or that day. Nice. Another song I find myself singing to, Luck of the Draw. What a great chorus in that one. And again, just like Devastator, I like to, re I'll repeat, oh, I love that. I just think it's really cool. I, I, I like that song. I find myself, talk about that song. Um, that was actually the last song we did. And we did it really quick. Actually, Lars Fredrickson, who says hello, by the way, I, he love called me man. when I was driving over. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to go do the podcast, etc. And he's like, Tell said hello. Gotta go back. Love that guy. <laughs> like, okay. He's so busy. He, he, Seen him on AEW the other day with Ruby Soho. Yeah, Like I know. a couple of weeks ago. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, he... Oh, you wrestling fans. Are you a big wrestling fan? Oh, come on. You should just have him on here talk about wrestling. He'll I told him... 
like, when do I get to do your? Because uh, he does a wrestling thing himself every once in a while. Yeah, he's, he does, kind of, yeah, he's got. He hasn't done it for a while, but I go, you get me on there because I come back with Hank Renner and seventies big time wrestling. Oh, he'll go. He, I've never seen anybody out like talk wrestling to him, st stump him on anything. He's he's. <laughs> He's it's insane. Yeah, luck of the draw. He came in, helped in. He actually he helped, he helped on a lot of. Lars came in one day and helped a lot on the background vocals. A lot of those background vocals he did with us. Stand and fighter dies. Type, same type thing as yeah, I. Yeah, luck of the draw. That that's a good song. And running out of time. You know another song. That's yeah. As we get older, Matt, we're running out of time. Yeah, and, pretty much. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like that, this won't be aired when we're when we're taping it, but I'll be fifty eight Thursday. Oh wow! Uh, Happy staring birthday. sixty in the damn. I'm still heavy. Come come see Exodus. Thursday Don't worry about that. I will kick your ass. Believe yeah, me. Well, I'm, yeah, believe yeah, me. I'm getting up there too. Stand fight or die. Uh, Very um. Like I said, I hear a lot of um. GBH, um, 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 kind of uh, maybe exploited, maybe um, um, discharge in that song a little bit. I, I all think the it's above, very, yeah, uh, very yeah. much yep. so, and 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 uh, I, I, very aggressive, really, and just like that, you know, uh, uh, the old boy type shit. You yeah, know? and so and then um, I have to say, sort of Dio. But it doesn't sound much like a Dio song, <laughs> so I, uh, I'm a bit confused, yeah, yeah, and I'm a big. Di you, I, I was very fortunate to get to know him. Uh, we toured with Black Sabbath, toured with Black Sabbath, so I oh, got yeah, to know wow. Dio on, right. on to where I stayed in touch with him till he wow. unfortunately passed. Yeah. I was very, I knew him, and so I, I listened to the song, and I actually have listened to that song more than the, just the other ones. I kind of gone back over, and I'm like. I love the homage. Yes, I love the homage, and so I haven't learned necessarily the lyrics, but it, the music doesn't give yeah, me. I don't much know the chorus. I, I don't know the chorus to me sounds like something he would sing. Really? Yeah, and some of the demon I think is probably maybe a little more of an homage to him. But yeah, uh, I, that's what I would say uh, a little bit. Yeah. But uh, because but I, mean, I was had, glad you put when I saw that I got so excited because I I love to pay respect to my heroes any little subtle way you can. Yeah. And if you have a song that's, you know, like, I mean, that happens to throw his name in there. That's, yeah, that's, that's I saw respect. him on the Mob Rules tour, like, in whatever that was, 81. Yeah, the Outlaws I, opened up. Yeah, we right. talked about that, and the guy threw oh, the yeah. toilet paper, hit him yeah, in the, yeah, uh, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. that, um, I don't know, that had a profound effect on me. Yeah. yeah, the Cow Palace, which was not the greatest sounding room on the planet. It never but was. It was where our concerts <laughs> were. It's where it was. That's where I got to go see but, concerts. But uh, he, that, I don't know, that guy, and everything I've read about him said he was a really nice guy and cool. And he was the most the, amazing the guy ever. The really. work he put out is just yes. incredible. Yeah, of the most genuine guy out of all the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet, famous celebrities in music and stuff, I thought that Ronnie was actually the most down-to-earth, wholesome person that really, like Halford, loves what he was doing, loves the music he was playing, didn't do it for because he got yeah. paid to do it or didn't do it because he has to run, you know, just running through the motions. He did it He did it because he truly, he truly, is that why you guys wrote the song? Was it more like an, an homage to Dio? No, Dion? not really. I mean, it was just sort of, I, I don't know why. It was a working title. It was, it was a working it title. Sounded, we wanted to do something for that. Just like Black Motor, we, you know, we wanted to do something for Halford, and, but sort of Dio just sort of more, you know how songs morph. We, you mentioned it earlier. You know, you could, sometimes you have to trust wherever a song goes. Sure, you sure. You know, and uh, it went there. And it yes, started it might have maybe as one thing, and it kind of went to where it was, and we were happy with where it was. That, sort, that song went through many, many changes. Can't, I mean, it's great. It's a great way to end the record, too. I mean, Thank you. I, 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 again, I love the sequencing of the album makes, is, is, to me, very serious stuff. Because, I mean, sometimes you go, wow, that song doesn't go. But if, man, a sequencing is done right, you know, and you, it's got a good flow to it, and there's hills and valleys, and there's hills and valleys all over this record. Again, it's the new Charger record. It's been out for about a week now, right? When it was just released a week ago. Friday. Came out Friday. Friday, right. A few so days, was, yeah. Yeah, a few and days. Go get it. Buddy Alex Nice, I got to shout out to him. Did yes, the artwork. De Char and definitely he's, shout. He's an old friend of mine. I mean, he, we, went to, we were in grade school together, um, and he was always really, really talented. And he's been working uh, in film and d doing a lot of graphic design. And my girlfriend told me to hit him up for, for, for the artwork. And I kind of had 
the idea of horses kind of charging through rebel. Four horses symbolize kind of an apocalyptic time, which we all kind of sure. have been living through. Uh, but then kind of pushing through that and getting over it. Yeah, so this is a kind of very really cool looking album cover right there. That's uh, um, um, we'll get to them where they can get your merchandise, but and I'm sure you have shirts with this. He and came stuff up with a mock up like within mm -hmm. within a couple of hours, and it was immediately just see. Fantastic. Well, I'd say this whole this whole interview, <laughs> yeah. things are just falling in yeah, line. Yeah. We're going to take a break with Charger. We're going to come back and we're going to find out where they are, where you can get their stuff, what they're doing with their other stuff, and just all that kind of good stuff when you return on Zetro's Toxic Vault. And you're looking for motorcycle apparel? Of course, there's only one place to go. Sin City Cycles in Antioch, California, and Sin City Cycles in Lynn, Massachusetts. And I'm fortunate enough to be sitting here with the owner, proprietor of Sin City Cycles, Mr. Greg Domi. And uh, I mean, I've come in the shop, you knives, pins, vests, hoodies, girlies. Um, my girlfriend loves her yoga shorts and her, and, oh, she bought the whole line. She's got the, uh, the, she the, certainly the, did. the workout pants. I mean, Greg does everything. It's very, very, very quality stuff. I mean, you again, you wash it, seams aren't coming apart. The prints are never twisted sideways. It doesn't shrink, they don't crack. I mean, all quality stuff inside your shop. Helmets, like I said, vests, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we do it. We do our best to give a good product. I mean, I wouldn't, people will say to me sometimes, well, this shrink, I almost take that personal because I'm not gonna sell you an item that's gonna shrink or you're gonna be disappointed with. And all I sell is Sin City Cycle clothing, no other gear. And I wouldn't have been able to do this for 35 years without your respect and your help. We appreciate you. Our business is actually a family-owned business, and the money goes to my family to help my family. And uh, we appreciate each and every person. Our slogan is, come in as a customer and leave as a friend. You know, uh, we do have all the things Steve mentioned and more. You know, we'll sell you a motorcycle for you or we'll sell you a motorcycle. If you want to get parts, we mainly use drag specialties. You order the part over the phone, and you get it in 24 to 48 hours. Also, our gift certificate, can be bought over the phone and I'll mail it to somebody else. If you want to send somebody a gift, say, uh, I want to send Steve a gift, I'd call the store, give him Steve's address and Steve's name, the amount, my credit card. He's going to open the mail one day and say, wow, check it out. How cool. <laughs> okay, I don't have to die. I go straight to the yeah. shop. <laughs> but go down and see him. He's on um, the address? 814 A Street, a Street Antioch, Antioch, California. California. But sometimes you do travel to Lynn Mass, because I've seen your Instagram Quite post, I'm like, whoa, he's in the bees back east right now. Quite often, we're in uh, Saugus, Massachusetts, at 352 Central Street. And we originated back east, as you know, uh, 34 years ago, this October will be 35 years. And our loyal customers has kept us alive with us just selling a Sin City Cycle product and all the apparel that goes with it. Helmets, glasses, gloves, uh, every all style of the motorcycle yeah. accessories. Yeah, all the style of clothes you like. If you want yoga pants, you want leggings, you want booty shorts, you want a hoodie, you want a ball cap, you want a beanie, you want pimp shades, you want a buck knife, you want a pin for your jacket with brass knuckles or a hammer. You know, we, we try to cater to everybody. It's from $6 to $6,000. So if you come in, you just got a few bucks on, you want to say hello, grab a pin, come on down, man. We really welcome you. Sin City Cycles, go see Greg Domi. And we are back with Charger. We have been talking about the history and how they got together. We have been talking about War Horse, their brand new record. And now I want to talk about where we can see them, where they're coming out, where you can get their stuff, what these guys are doing individually. And so we're going to start with you, Jason. I'm okay. Start with you can get our stuff on Bandcamp. Like, um, you can get it directly through the record label, through Pirates Press Records. Um, and you can come to a show, and we're going to have a couple different versions at our record release show April 9th at the Starline Social Club in Oakland. We, we have a, uh, there's like a deluxe version of that as well, so with like a nice foil stamp. So you can actually get vinyl at the show. Oh, yeah, we'll, have, two, we'll have like three different variations of, of the vinyl at the show. Nice, nice. And you also teach drum lessons, tell everybody who is interested in, yeah, I mean, so this I guy's a badass drum teacher, so. 
I teach uh, private lessons out of my out of my studio um, in Oakland, and you can just get in touch with me, Jason.Willer at gmail.com. That would be the best way. Okay, and, and we'll yeah. put up. We'll have Tim put all that graphics up right here, cool. so people people can read it. He teaches to, my son. Yeah, that's 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 great. Yeah, it awesome. sounds like he teaches a lot of people because you were talking earlier. He used to teach mine. Yeah, see? he doesn't do it anymore. Really, see how that starts. No, yeah. now, now it's time to be. Now it's time to be a rock man. He is put that suit on. He is a good teacher, though. I've seen him in action. I can't believe the pace of patience you have. I could not do that. It's you know, it's amazing, uh, actually. Job. No, you're doing good, though. Cool, thank you. Drew, what, what, where can we see? Wait, would you got anything? Any socials? Anything they want to follow you? I, I you're mean, not gonna have fans. You I, got you on you on Facebook or you on <laughs> any of that? Cameo. Huh? I mean, cameo. I, I, you doing cameos I, for I anybody? Funnel, Come I on. Funnel, funnel it all into Charger, man. You I used to. I had a, I had a pub before COVID, but unfortunately, it's been a, a, a well, casualty of, of, of things. Damn, like uh, so many but, things. But, you know, but it is what it is. I've been very fortunate that uh, my wife and I also. My wife has a restaurant um, and a catering company. So what's the restaurant? Restaurant, plug the restaurant. It's yeah. Thai, Thai, Thai <laughs> Table in Berkeley. Thai Table. Thai, where's Thai the address? 913 University Avenue. Can you get takeout at Thai Table? Hell yeah. <laughs> then you need to call <laughs> Thai <laughs> Table and get your takeout today. Come on, I'm going to plug you guys. That's how it works. It's Somebody really from good. Canada is now going to call <laughs> Thai Table that watched this show <laughs> and go. After this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, good. Man. Thai it's Table. Really, I really, really love good. Thai food. In that respect, I'm very, I'm very good. fortunate. So good I just, for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's Charger all the way, man. Like, I I'm love that. And then you know what? When you put all your eggs in, sometimes it works out. And I'm telling you, listening to this music, knowing you guys, and especially your history, your history, and now uh, well, seeing what you've done uh, guitar-wise on this record and how it all fits in a unit, guess what? You're, you're on your way. You're on your, you're on your way. <laughs> Drew's podcast coming in the next year. Right. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a spinoff of my show. <laughs> Matt, what you got going? I got nothing. I love he's got uh, he's got baseball <laughs> games to go to. Yeah, yeah. Hi Matt, you've uh, got baseball games to go to. We still don't know who our third or first baseman is yet, but we got baseball games. Yeah, I'm gonna recruit him to be a Phillies fan. Yeah, he's a, I okay. You gotta, you gotta uh, I don't I don't heart. give lessons, and I don't go. I go to restaurants. I don't own one, but his restaurant's really good. <laughs> um, Rant, Rant is on a break right now, so I'm just doing charge. New music was Rant Rance and May uh, yeah, at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just trying to, everyone's trying to catch their breath here. Yeah, we, um, we actually went on, Rancid went on, we did a Boston to Berkeley with a dropkick. I saw that was great, man. We managed to pull that off, uh, which was really good, and we really You guys it. finished the whole tour. Whole tour. During a time when nobody was finishing whole mm -hmm. tours. Yeah, we... And yeah. I was following, because I obviously I follow you guys, and I'm watching yeah. you, and you, and you and Lars especially, and I'm, and I, I'm just going, hey, Rancid's out. They're still playing. If you want to get in, you want to get back in the music, step on the house, boy. Music, hit. I'm in the way now. Hey, 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 You know what I mean? Well, it was, yeah, a lot of, yeah, it was different different kind of touring. It was the weirdest tour I've ever been on. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, we got to play out there, and that was a lot of fun. So, That's always the best part. Right now, we're taking a break, and hopefully Charger will play more, more shows. What do we have now for Charger other than the, um, the record release show? 
Well, we're we're working on something. Hopefully, we can get this. Hopefully, this this pans out. But we're working on uh, we're working on an East Coast run, and we'll do you know a couple of other couple of other things. You were talking about maybe early early summertime if if it yes. happens, right? Yes, that's what right. we're looking at. So hopefully that hopefully that comes through. I get I get to go. Hopefully, I get to go back to Philly and see see some friends and family, and they can catch yeah. what we're doing. And uh, and we're hoping to get back up to the Pacific Northwest again as well because we we love to play up there. So. It's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah. Yeah. If World War Three doesn't happen, Europe would be pretty cool. Yes, that's the other thing. We're, we're well, I'm on. actually, Exodus is booked. We leave July 9th. And yeah. uh, from what I understand, we are going. And so Awesome. And Tell so, us how it is, man. I'm going to. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to run from it, you know, obviously, yeah. you know. I mean, the world has to. What we do is also part of the economy, guys, and part of life for people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even, yeah. unfortunately, that I can't. Play in Russia for the great Russian metal fans, or Ukraine for the great Ukrainian metal fans. You know, it's too bad, and, and unfortunately, but um, you know, we have to pull forward so that we can all pull out of this together. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Yep. from the pandemic to this, we all just need to pull out of this, out of this, and cease. And I think we are. It looks like it. We all just need to keep making music. Yeah. Keep going on it. You guys just keep need to going out, seeing the bands that are out there. You know, supporting your bands. Uh, supporting all your local bands, especially because that's where everything starts is in the local things and moves up, you know, and then obviously when they come out on tour, go there, buy an album, buy a shirt, help the bands out. Nobody that's coming in you guys are going to see is rich, especially after the last two years. There's a lot of people that are struggling right now and they need we need each other because in the music world and the music family <coughs> we only have each other right guys yeah yeah that's true well hey man thank you so much for coming thanks, in buddy. once again thanks for having us drew thank great to having have you matt thanks always for having us, man. Really always no it, problem buddy. i really thank i really great you guys know what to do i want to see tons of comments on this i want to know if you've heard the new charge if you listen to charger you let me know obviously if you have not subscribed to my channel i need you to subscribe to my channel because that tells youtube that we are doing something really cool here and i will get some more of these great interviews with awesome bands like this and more things here on zetros toxic vault we'll see you guys real soon <laughs>